Welcome to the Game Changer Podcast. My name is Satema Ngali and today's topic, confrontation versus contention. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Top of the morning, welcome back. This is the Game Changer Podcast with Satema Ngali. You guys better get your minds right and get up and let's go. Go, 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 uh-huh. go. See, it's more than the game that we change. We on- welcome, welcome, welcome to being a Game Changer. I'm so grateful that you're here. You're watching this on YouTube, hit that like, hit that subscribe button. If you're listening to this on any of the platforms, do me a huge favor and leave a review for us. Share this with someone who needs to hear it. All right, let's dive in today. We have these conversations about confronting things. And a lot of times people hear that, ah, they hear confrontation or confront and they think contention. Contention, like to fight and to be angry. Now I grew up in a home where we listened to church talks and read scriptures and prayed and you know, I believe in God and Jesus and being kind to people. But I also believe in confronting things that don't work. Right? There's a number of ways to say this. Powerful people confront. Everything you want is on the other side of a conversation you're not willing to have, AKA you're just not willing to confront. And weak people avoid. Then you avoid everything. You avoid the conversation. You walk on eggshells. You make up stories. Pretty soon you've made up this huge soap opera about something that's really small. I'll give you a couple examples about confronting versus contention. And why this makes a difference to you is if you are a person who wants to build a life that you love. You want to go put more in your bank account. You want to have more muscle and greater physical health. You want more connection and passion and intimacy and love and romance and trust and loyalty in your marriage. And or you just want greater purpose and direction. Your ability and your skill set to be able to confront and face will help you to get there. It's huge. So listen, in my marriage, my marriage is amazing, by the way. I love my beautiful wife. She's amazing. She's incredible. We're married 17 and a half years. We'll be 18 here in a few months. And you know, sometimes, September, okay, a lot of times, I make up stories. Right? I make up these interpretations and meanings. For example, I love to like hug. I hug everybody. I put my hands on people's shoulders, like I'm a touchy dude. I'm like, hey, what's up? I go to the gym, I hug the trainers and I high five people and the old ladies always can give me hugs and I'm that way. And so sometimes in my marriage, you know, my wife, she's not that way. If you see my wife, I, she'll like shake her hand. I'll be like, what's up? And in my mind, I want her to put her hand on me more. Now, if she doesn't, what would happen is Satema would make up a story. I would start to create a meaning or the interpretation of her not putting her hand on my shoulder or putting her arm around me. It meant to me that she didn't love me. I know it's crazy. I know she loves me, but I would make up these stories. And it got to the point where I was like, my wife doesn't even love me. She's not even in love with me, which is not true. But as human beings, we make up stories. I want you to take a look at your life right now and just be like, where do I make up meanings? Where do I make up stories? Where do I like create chaos where there is no chaos? Because you have a meaning. So it could be in your, your marriage, could be with a business partner, could be with your employer or your employee, right? Could be in a number of places. Well, I just know that when I'm not getting what I want and or I'm not happy because I'm making something up, there's one of two ways to do this. I can weak or non-powerful ways to avoid it and lie about it and pretend like, oh, I'm, I'm fine, I'm good. You know, people say that, oh, I'm good. Good. I'm over it. And when you say you're over it, you're clearly not over it. I could do that, which is the non-powerful route, or I could take the powerful route, which is the direct route, which is to confront. Now confront does not mean I go and attack her because that's contention. Like get mad and yell and, and fight and argue. Although some people do like to argue in their relationships, another conversation. But I decided to confront this. Confront means to just face direct, speak direct, speak straight to and just face it head on. And that conversation looks something like, hey, can I talk to you about something? She's like, yeah. And we had a conversation. I just said, hey, I just, I want you to listen to me and, and really understand where I'm coming from. Can you do that? She's like, sure. I said, you know, I love you. And she's like, I love you. And she's like, what's going on? I'm like, I love when you are affectionate with me. You know, you grab my hand, put your arm around. I love that. She's like, okay, I know you do. I was like, I just feel like you haven't been lately. And in my mind, I make up a story like, you don't love me. And we talked and we had direct, real conversation. And she listened and I listened and I just went head on. Again, I didn't attack her. I'm not yelling. I'm just confronting and I'm telling the truth about where I am and what I think and what I feel and what the story that I make up. Come to find out, she had a different perspective. Now, if I don't confront this thing, I could pull back, make up stories, 
be passive aggressive and do a lot of dumb things which is non-powerful. Listen, the way to get what you want is to be direct about it. So it's great. We came to some solutions and I figured some perspectives on my side weren't quite, right? I wasn't seeing the whole picture. I was seeing from where I was. And it's amazing, right? You just go confront things head on. Another example is with my business partners, right? I got business partners, a number of them, different businesses. And sometimes, even though I work with my business partners, we begin to make up stories. Now you can confront it head on or you can just avoid it. And again, most people avoid. So what did I do? I just say, hey, can we talk? I'm like, here's where I'm at. Here's what's going on. Where are you at? Like, where are you at? And you know, sometimes it might seem aggressive. Listen, please hear me. When you confront, some of you actually need to be more aggressive. You do. Because if you're not aggressive, you don't communicate clearly. And the more skilled you get, the more emotionally mature you become, you can actually confront things very factual with data, what's real, and you don't even have to get emotional about it because it's not emotional because you have no stories. You're just gonna say, hey, this is what I see. So I have a conversation with my business partner and we talk and we talk through things and we just have like real conversations and come to find out we're both making up stories. It's like, holy smokes. Crazy, right? Third example, today, real time, this is real time. I tell my son, hey, we gotta leave at 10.50. I got an appointment at 11. So at 10.50, we need to be walking downstairs to the car. 10.50, he's like, 10.50, say it, 10.50. 10.50 shows up, I start to walk, he's like, oh, I gotta go use the bathroom. I'm like, I get in the car, it's 10.53. Call him, no one call, 1054. He gets in the car, it's 1057. Now, I look at him like this, right? I look over, I'm driving, I said, son, listen to me. <clears throat> and I just confronted head on. I said, listen, this don't work. I had to be a little aggressive so he can get us. I said, son, this doesn't work. What time did I tell you? 1050. So what could you have done different? I could have gotten up at like 1045. Yeah, 1045, go get ready, be downstairs at 1050. The next time I will leave you. This doesn't work. And then I explain, daddy don't like to be late. Being punctual is very respectful. People who are late, in my opinion, disrespectful. May not be the truth, but that's how I live. So you live in my home, son. I love you. I'm trying to help you. I love you. Don't do that again, please. He's like, got it. I'm like, okay, cool. All right, we're done. It's just a, a real direct come at it. So if you're an employee and you got a problem with your boss, don't go talk to people behind their back. Just go straight to the boss and say, hey boss, I got to talk with you. If you're married or in a relationship, <clears throat> something's not working, you're not getting what you want, or you feel like something's off, Go confront head on. If something's not working in your home, who's the person that you need to go confront? And some of you need to go confront yourself and stop lying. Stop lying about the work that you think you're doing. Stop lying about where you really are. Stop lying about what's not working in your marriage or what's not working with your nutrition. Like, just confront yourself and be like real with it. Confronting is direct. Now, the difference between contention, contention is just you just want, ready, ready for this. With confronting, you're trying and you're wanting to do what's right and find what's right. In contention, you're trying to be right. All you care about is being right and justifying your position. So this is where people attack and they fight. I grew up in a home where there's a scripture that says contention is of the devil, right? Where you go fight. Sometimes confronting looks like fighting, but if the intention is to do what's right and the intention is to get clear, it could look like contention. But if your intention is to love and to serve and to gain clarity and to be on the same page, it won't be contention. So here's my question for you. Who do you need to go confront today? Is there a person in your life that you've been holding ill feelings towards, you've, you've got a grudge against, or you feel like something's off? Pick up the phone, have a conversation, set up the conversation, create some rules around the conversation. Tell them, hey, this means a lot to me. I need to have a conversation with you. It's important to me. If they're like, what's it about? Just say, Let's, we'll talk about it when we get there. Everything's okay, but there's something that's very important to me. And if you'll do that, life's gonna be amazing. So go confront, 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 confront. Face head on direct. Sometimes you gotta be aggressive. Most times you can just be calm and smooth and clear. And that's the final thing with confronting. You better be clear about what you want. You gotta be clear about where you're trying to go. You gotta be clear about the result and or the outcome that you want to have happen. I appreciate you listening to the Game Changer podcast. Go be a game changer. Right? Go make a difference for people. Go, go change the game in your life and share this with someone who needs to hear it and uh, go confront it. What needs to be confronted. Until next time, I'm out. Let's go. go, 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 uh -huh. go, go. See, it's more than the game that we changing. We don't do it for the block, do it for the name. Yeah. No, there ain't no stopping it. If you really want it, better rock with it. This is how to be a game changer. Better put your pride down, heavy, you get your pen up. Wanna be the greatest, we ain't stopping until we win, yo. This is how to make it when they hating. We ain't worried what they saying. This is how to how to be a game changer.